How's it going, everyone? Bob here, KD4 BMG HOA Ham. Ever since the F Loop 2.0 made a trip to the attic, I've been interested in the F Loop 3.0. And oh, by the way, that 2.0 has the Chameleon Remote Loop Tuner on it, so I can sit right here in the comfort of my shack and tune that antenna, which is in the attic space, about 25 to 30 feet away from me. I've done a couple of videos. I've shown you how to tune it to be resonant. And oh, by the way, I'm going to show you an alternate method with this particular device in the very near future. And yes, that is a chameleon antenna analyzer. But today, let's talk about something different. The F-Loop 3.0 today on the Chameleon website is out there as a DIY kit, and you can save a ton of money doing this DIY kit. As a matter of fact, just a few minutes ago, that was in a pile of parts sitting here across the workbench. Let me take you through the build process in case you have any questions about how to do this. The DIY kit is good on 80 through 10 meters on the ham bands and includes everything on my workbench. What are we going to do with this chameleon label? Well, it's going to a new feature here in the shack. It's my label wall. It's yours. If you're a ham radio operator with a sticker, a YouTuber with a sticker, you're a manufacturer, my address is good on QRZ. Send me your label, your sticker, and let's pack out this wall. Remove everything from the workbench with the exception of the polymer case and open it up and start emptying out all the hardware. What we're doing here is we're just organizing like items together. And then that's going to help us with this jigsaw puzzle. And this is like a, a six-year-old jigsaw puzzle. This isn't 10,000 pieces with no border and all blue sky. This is really simple when you get all things organized. You look at the photographs on the Chameleon website. It is very obvious where everything goes. So do yourself a favor, take everything in the bags and organize them together so you know how to proceed. And these are the basic tools that you'll need. You can get by with other things, but these are the tools that I use. The painter's tape in the bottom corner opposite me will make sense in a little while. You'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. A needle nose pliers certainly is helpful. A 3 8 inch nut driver. And you'll need the following Allen wrenches. A 1 8 7 64 3 30 second, and 5 64 And then the two um, ignition wrenches, I didn't actually use those. The nuts that are provided here by Chameleon have a star washer attached to them. And when they touch up against any of the polymer components here, they kind of self-tighten. So I didn't even really need to use any wrenches. But this is the type of tool set that you'll need, and then you'll be ready to go. Visit the Chameleon website and navigate to the Cha F-Loop 3.0 DIY kit. It gives several photographs from different angles showing the complete build. In other words, where everything goes. A picture paints a thousand words. Study these pictures. It will be obvious to you where every part goes. Of course, I'm going to show you in the video, but I studied the pictures and that's how I knew to assemble it. One final preparation step before we actually begin building. Dry fit everything. I took all of the components. I won't show you all of it here, just an example. I took the components and I dry fit them together. I put the screws through the holes. I made sure everything lined up perfectly. All the holes were in the correct locations, correct sizes, and that I had all the correct pieces. This way, once I started, I wouldn't have to stop to make any adjustments. I think it's just a smart thing to do in preparation. All right, let's get to building. A lot of what we're doing here is common sense. It just makes sense to get this capacitor assembly in the polymer case first. But before we do it, we have to attach the switch wire to this, and it's going to go in the top right hand screw. So go ahead and loosen that screw up enough to get a spade connector behind it. And once you get it loose, grab the switch wire with the spade terminal. There's only one in the kit and you're going to want to put that right behind the head of that screw and orient the direction of it kind of down towards four o'clock. That's kind of what the picture shows on the Chameleon website. Then go ahead and tighten down on this. 
This isn't a world's strongest man contest, so don't go nuts on any of the fasteners here. Just tighten them to a reasonable amount. Maybe as tight as it was when you loosened it up to begin with. If it was loose to begin with, then tighten it a little tighter. Just think about how this thing needs to be durable as it's being used in your application. You don't want any of these screws coming loose, but again, you know, use some common sense on how tight you torque down on any of the screws and nuts in this entire kit, especially when you're connecting to the polymer pieces. With the wire attached, we're now ready to put the capacitor into the case. Line the shaft of the capacitor up to the hole in the case and keep some pressure upward on it with your finger and then push in and down on that black plate that has the capacitor attached to it. It's a snug fit, but in it goes. And now you're just going to make sure the holes line up in the top left and bottom right of that black plate and that they line up with the holes on the back of the polymer case. Now this plate here, orient that correctly. Get that hole away from the shaft. Don't ask me how I know, I just know. Orient that hole opposite of the shaft and then the plate can only go one direction. It will go with the holes tapered up and then the tapered shouldered screw will go down through. We're gonna do one at a time here. And quite frankly, this is the most difficult thing for me to do this entire assembly. My 3 8 inch nut driver won't fit in there in that top right hand corner screw. So I actually take one of the nuts, grab it with my needle nose pliers, set it on top of the screw and begin to tighten it with my finger. You know, it's going to be hard for you to see in here with my sausage fingers, but that's what I did, just like I described it. It slid off once, I correct it here with my left hand, and second try, it grabbed the hold, and very quickly, I just turned on it, and it was tight enough that it's now holding the capacitor in place. See, it there it is in the top right corner. Now let's go after the bottom left corner. Put your second screw in the back of the aluminum plate, feed it through the polymer box, through that black polymer plate holding the capacitor, and now our nut driver fits in there. Put that second nut on there and go ahead and tighten it down at this point in time. Once you're done attaching the second nut, we're just gonna flip the box over so the aluminum plate is standing up and then you have a choice you can either tighten down on it now or you can leave it a little loose as you attach other components throughout the build totally your choice if you do choose to tighten it um, later make sure you don't forget again you don't need to use any pliers because that star washer keeps it in place now I just grab some extra components, they're not extra, but a next set of components that are obvious what they're for. Let's get the obvious taken care of so I have less and less parts on the workbench. The lock washer goes on the bolt first, then the flat washer, so that flat washer is in the underside of the lid, flat washer again, and then nut on top of this. Now you need two 9 16 wrenches and you're going to tighten just till that lock washer flattens out on the inside and that'll keep tension on the nut and bolt so that they don't loosen up. Remember, not a world's strongest man contest. You're torquing on polymer here. So just get it snug, flatten out that lock washer and you're good to go. Next, we'll install the shoulder brackets and the SO239 coax connectors. They get installed at the same time. We'll put one screw on the back side of that shoulder bracket before we put the SO239 connector there. There is a specific orientation here. There's a pointier end and a rounded end. The pointy ends go to the outside of the box or away from the box. And you can look specifically at the pictures on the Chameleon website and it will become obvious to you. Let's get this first screw through here. Nothing else gets attached. And once we put this nut on here, which I needed to do with a needle nose pliers, again, because my sausage fingers won't fit in here, you might have the same problem. Just use a needle nose or some other type of pliers to get the nut in there, get it started, and then you can go ahead and tighten it down. Do not torque down on it at this point. You want this shoulder bracket to be able to flex a little bit as you put the SO239 connector on. 
It's going to be difficult for me to talk about left side, right side of the control box because it depends on how you orient it on your workstation. So you're really going to have to pay attention to the photographs and what I'm doing here in the video to know which side you're working on. As the shaft is away from me and the plate is towards me, that's the side I'm working on. There are four screws specific to the SO239 connectors, two for each side. Again, it's obvious which components to use. I'm getting the first one started. Again, we need the needle nose pliers to get that nut in there. And next up, we're going to grab that wire that is attached to the capacitor and get that onto the second screw and start to torque down on that nut. We have all three screws and nuts on here. There's no reason not to torque down on them at this point in time. You can tighten pretty strong on these ones that are on the SO239 connector. This final one here on the end, that's just polymer, thin wall polymer there. So don't go over torquing on that right on the inside of the nut, thin wall polymer. Let's switch over to the other side. It's a repeat, just some different wires that we're connecting, but the same three screws, doing the easy one first. And then we'll go over to the SO239 connector and get that in place. And here we go with the first screw in. And what I've chosen to do here first is to add in that switch wire with the ring terminal because I think uh, it's on the deep side of the box. So I'm, again, trying to do the things that are most challenging and work uh, away from the challenging to the more simple. I'm putting this on by viewing it on my screen because my, my camera is overhead. If I had looked down inside of that, all you would see would be the back of my head. So this was a challenge to get that screw and that nut in there just following what I see on my computer screen from the camera. You ought to try that sometime. So now that we have that wire attached, we'll go ahead and we'll move on over to the wire, the last one that's on the capacitor. And we're going to pull that up to this screw here on the top right hand corner. Oh, I over torqued that. I left that in here so you could see if you over torque, you know, you can't shift something to get another screw in. Grab that other wire that's on the capacitor. And of course, be careful with these. They're soldered in place on that capacitor. You don't want to stretch them. You also want to make sure that the metal of this is not touching that other screw that we just tightened down for the switch wire ring terminal. All right, all three screws and nuts are in place. Go ahead and torque down here as tight as you need to on this SO239 and then fairly light here on the end because of that thin wall polymer. And we're done with this part. What do you think? Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now we have two wires here. Look at the pictures very specifically. This switch is oriented in a direction that you should follow. Do it just like the picture show, just like I show here. And you're going to attach the wires the very same way. The wire that's towards the left goes on the left terminal. The wire that's on the right goes on the right terminal. All pretty straightforward. Again, I told you this was not a difficult kit. You have a sophisticated piece of gear when you're done here, but this is an easy kit for assembly. Let's talk about getting this case all closed up. Let's get this lid on it. Mine came, and I assume yours will, with two screws pre-installed, and now we're going to put this third screw in. And then in a moment, I'm going to show you something specific about putting these in. There's a shoulder on the top edge of this screw that has no threads on it. So when you're screwing this in, it's initially self-tapping in the top plastic lid. And then once it self-taps through there, that shoulder free floats in the lid, so you don't have to worry about ever losing it here watch this it's going to just quickly break through watch there it just broke through it self tapped on the lid and now you're uh, screwing it into the threaded insert hey we are almost done the control knob just slides on rather easily and we're going to tighten down on that set screw and what we have now is a functional control box for our f loop 3.0 how about that label that needs to go on the top? Well, here's what I did. Let's see if it works for you. I took some painter's tape and put it very straight across the edge of the control box. And my plan here is to take the backing off of that label and use this as a straight edge. I'll actually butt the label up against my painter's tape and that'll be my guide. 
that label is mighty sticky. So really try not to have it touch the polymer top until the edge is touching the blue tape. And then once you feel like you have it aligned straight, go ahead then and slowly put it in place and press it down so all the adhesive is sticking correctly. And what do you think of that? That is a pretty nifty installation. The F-Loop 2.0 will stay permanently located in the attic space. It's stealth here in the HOA. No one sees it, therefore I can use it anytime I want. We use it this summer when Hurricane Adalia was well south of us, and it was forecasted to become a Category 3 headed towards Tampa Bay. It missed us, went further north of us, worse than that. I stayed connected to the Hurricane WatchNet during that entire time. Now that I've got a 3.0, well, I have plans for that. We'll get away from working and building it to actually going out and playing. And there'll be a video soon on that Chameleon Antenna Analyzer as well. That's not yet available for sale on their website. It's in production now, and it will be introduced soon. Check out the Chameleon website on the 3.0 DIY kit. You're going to see a lot of favorable, positive reviews. People saying about how simple this was to build. I couldn't agree with them more. It took me an hour. But remember, I'm moving multiple cameras around, doing multiple takes because I need to present it to you in a way that helps you and is intelligible. If all I was doing was focusing on the build, it's a 30-minute build. I hope you found this useful. I had a lot of fun with this one. Talk to you soon, friends. 73.